Hi, Miguel. Um, many congratulations. What a night. And where's this performance been all season? Well, really happy, Ian. Um, we came into a tough place. This team hasn't lost at home, I think, in almost two years. So to do what we've done tonight, um, credit to the players for how they approach the game and how brave they were in our approach. And then I think when we demand them efficiency, I think today is a good example of the level of efficiency that you need to win uh, matches in Europe away from home like this. Absolutely incredible first half with those three goals in six minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Not only that, I think the reaction, the, the moment Emile scored the goal and the goal was disallowed, the team uh, straight away reacted and they wanted more. Um, again, we were brave, we were uh, really efficient in our high place, we put them under a lot of pressure. And then uh, when we had to make the decision with the balls in the final thirds, I think uh, we were really clinical. And finally, looking forward to meeting your predecessor in the next round, Unai Emery. Yes, it will be a tough uh, game, Villarreal, a top side, and Unai is the most successful manager in this competition. So we know, enjoy tonight. We're going to have uh, time to prepare that one and no time to prepare Fulham on Sunday, but uh, this is where we are. Don't worry about Fulham on Sunday. Well done tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. We'll go to Roger Clark from Sky Sports. Hello, hi, congratulations on the win. Um, would you say, given the circumstances and what was at stake today, would you say this is perhaps the best performance of your season so far? I don't know. It certainly was one of the most important games. Uh, we know how important the competition is um, for the club, for ourselves and for the fans. And, um, and today we brought a difficult result back from the Emirates because um, we weren't that efficient on the day. And today we showed completely the opposite um, uh, resilience in the opponent's box uh, to kill their way in the moment we had uh, the momentum and the opportunity in the game to kill it. Um, can I ask you about uh, before the match when the players took the knee? Um, it seems that they really wanted to make a, a, a point about this one, particularly Lacassette kneeling in front of them. W was that the case? Were they keen to make a point? Was it something that was discussed before? Yeah, they asked uh, me and the club that they wanted to take that initiative and uh, they had the right reasons for it. So the club was very supportive. I was supportive. And, uh, and thankfully, the referees and UF as well, they've been supportive. So I think it was a, a good gesture. And can I ask you as well about Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang? He's yeah. uh, been in hospital. Is he? So can you just give us an update on that? Is he actually still in hospital and how long are you expecting him to be out for? We just spoke with him. He's at home. He's fine. He's completely fine at the moment. Uh, he had two days in hospital to get the right treatment, but um, he's feeling good now. And feeling good, but back, will he be back training soon, back playing soon? Well, see how he recovers. I think uh, he will need a few days uh, to recover from that, but uh, he wants to be back as soon as possible. That's what he said to me. Thank you. Congratulations again. Thanks, Roger. We'll go to James Bench. Hi, Mikel. Um, you know, obviously, this was a, a game where two young players, Emil Smith Rowe and, and Bakayo Saka, really stood out. Could you speak both from yourself and for the club as a whole how much it means to, to see these youngsters that were forged at Hale End, you know, really running the show on a big night like tonight? For me, it's a joy to, to watch them play, to watch them every day in training, how they behave, the passion and the commitment that they have for the club, and then how much they like to play football. And um, you have to let them express. You have to give them certain work for them to work and some ideas of how they can exploit their, their qualities, and, and then it's up to them. And I thought that both of them were really, really good today. And how easy for, for them is it to have someone like Laka who can score the chances, but you know, does so much more before the ball gets into the box? I think that's when you start to create cohesion and understanding between players, that uh, players have to make each other better, and that's a big quality. And then you have you need somebody at the back to make those players better and get the surroundings and the collective um, understanding the way it should be. And the same happened with the back line. I think today we looked, again, really solid. Uh, I don't think we conceded a shot on targets. Um, and that's merit because they a little bit continue to a little bit help as well in, in these understanding moments. Thanks, Mikhail. Enjoy the evening. Go to Paul Brown. Hi, Mikhail. Hi. 
Um, could you just tell us when you found out that Aubameyang had contracted malaria? Did, did he play the, the first leg knowing that he, he had that? And, and when would you expect him back on, on the timeline of, of recovery? No, no. The, when when he wasn't involved against Sheffield, uh, the two days before, he, he wasn't feeling good. But uh, nobody could expect that that was the case. And the dog did uh, some more tests, some more analytics. And uh, that's when he came on. And uh, that's when straight away the dog realized very quickly what it had to be done and they did a great job and uh, and he's safe and he's feeling good. So it, it could be a little while then before he makes a full recovery, could it? Hopefully not because he feels really good. That's what he said to me today and uh, he really wants to give back. But uh, I don't know, if the treatment is efficient, it shouldn't be taking too long. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Matt Dunn, please. Hi, Mikel. Uh, you say you've spoken to Pierre Emerick today. Was that after the match? Have you already had a chance to make a call? No, no. no, I, no I, I, I came to, I straight came to you to guys, to so guys. I haven't had the chance to do it. it. But the dog has been on the phone with him now, and uh, he just mentioned that, that he was at home and, and he was feeling good. And, but in, in all seriousness, when, he, when you suddenly hear of someone who's poorly like that, how much of that was a get well soon present from the rest of the team back to him? Well, everybody's been in contact uh, with him. He's been really supportive with every teammate through messages and calls. And he was watching the game like everybody else at, at Colney, the David, Martins, uh, Kieran, everybody that is, uh, is not being able to, to be involved and is being, being missed here. But uh, it's what it is. These things happened. And uh, he traveled to his country and he picked it up. And you know that these rigs uh, always exist. Thanks, Matt. We'll go to Amy Lawrence, please. Uh, hi, Mikel. Um, I'm just wondering, after the FA Cup win last season and now you're to as far as the semi-final, possibly, hopefully the final to come, what is it about this group or the way that you connect with them that cup, cup competitions seem to be bringing the best out of them? I don't know. We haven't won it yet. We are only in the semi-finals, uh, but they really won it. Um, we feel that uh, we have a good chance. Um, players really believe that we can do it, which is... Uh, the most important thing, because that's what really pushes you and drives you and, uh, and makes you play like we did tonight. And, uh, and let's see how far. There are still some important teams. Villarreal is going to be a tough opponent. So let's go step by step. Is that kind of fluency in attack, that kind of dynamism central to what you're trying to achieve? I mean, you, you see the handbrake off in this kind of game. It seems to be a completely different arsenal. Is that the way to try and win these trophies? Absolutely. And that's uh, the way we're going to approach the, the next game, that's for sure. And not only that, but with our aggressiveness and where we want to press that ball and and where we want to play with our line and playing the opponents half as much as possible. And when we do that with the players that we have up front and the understanding that they are acquiring slowly, um, we can be very dangerous and effective. And, um, and that's the way we will approach it. Does a game like this cement exactly what you're trying to achieve with the team when you get this kind of result? You've been working at this country. Yes, week. well, it's an important result, but uh, there was still a lot of things that we have to do better in the game. Um, there's a huge margin in, in a lot of things that we are doing at the moment, but um, they will come. Thanks so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. And finally, we'll go to Nick Ames. Hi, Mikhail. Hi, Nick. Um, firstly, congratulations on, um, on the night. Um, just going back, you, um, you mentioned the conversation about taking the knee that the players had. Um, um, could you, like... I know you like to keep things in the dressing room, but could you elaborate a bit on, on, on when that conversation was and who led it? They came to me, they wanted to take that initiative. Um, we spoke with the club uh, to make sure that we could follow the, the rules of UEFA and uh, we can do it in the right way. We decided to take uh, that approach, which I really like from the players. And uh, I must say that UEFA was very supportive as well. Was it one player who came to you or, or a group of them, or was it decided by them? There were the captains came to me and, um, and asked me to do that, and, um, and I just supported them like, like the club did. Cool. Thanks, Mikhail. Thanks to you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank See you, you soon.